In this video, we're going to try to visualize the directional derivative of the paraboloid f of x, y is x squared plus y squared at the point 2 comma 1. Here, the positive x-axis is red coming out at you, and the positive y-axis is the green one that's moving to the right. u is a unit vector, and I've written it as a function of theta, so the i component is cosine of theta, and the j component is sine of theta. And your theta runs from 0 to 2 pi. And what u does is it determines the direction that we're looking when we ask the question, what is the rate of change in this paraboloid f at that point 2, 1? Now to measure this, uh, theoretically what we're going to do is we're going to say that that blue vector determines that blue plane that's vertical and it slices through the surface at the point 2, 5, 1. And you notice when it slices through it, it cuts an actual parabola that is in the blue plane. And that is something that you can measure the, the slope of. And that is what we're going to say is the directional derivative at that particular point. Now, what we're going to do in a moment is vary theta from 0 to 2 pi and just track how does the slope change. And so here it goes, and you see as theta increases, that is moving this blue plane around, and then you notice that uh, as we're going around, the slope right now is decreasing. And so notice right, right now the orientation of the plane, that slope was going to be negative as we're spinning around here. What we saw um, is that the slope, its biggest value was between four and four and a half, and it looks like its smallest value was between uh, negative four and negative four and a half. And so we've just completed one full rotation. We're just gonna go around one more time so that you can see it. Um, and again, just try to track what's going on. So right now the slope, it's decreasing, and there it's zero, and now we're negative again. Try to track how negative it gets. So right there it hit its most negative spot and now notice that the slope is starting to increase again it's starting to slowly become positive now it's zero and now it's coming up to be positive now this is going to stop once we get back to uh, our original theta equals zero position now let's look at this 2d graph that tracks just what the slope is on the right and uh, and it, i tried to get it to line up so that it matched how theta increases on the left and on the right so again, on the right is the actual value of the slope as it depends on u. In other words, as it depends on theta. What you might notice is that there are two dotted lines that kind of bound what this graph is between. And the top dotted line, it's supposed to just nick what kind of the peak over there to the left is. And from Calc 3, we know that the theory says that the maximum value of a directional derivative is attained whenever you point in the direction of the gradient. And we're going to talk about the gradient in a minute. And the actual maximum value itself, the actual maximum rate of increase, is the magnitude of the gradient. And vice versa, the minimum rate of increase is going to be the negative value of the magnitude of the gradient. So that's the blue dotted line below. Now the last thing that we're going to do in just a moment is go back to just our surface. And now we're going to add the gradient in. So the gradient is this vector here in green. And uh, the gradient at 2, 1 is the vector for 2. Now it cuts out its own plane, and then that slices through the surface at that point, and the max slope is attained right there. So that's the direction in which we are going up the bowl at the fastest rate. And what you see is that when the blue plane and the green plane align, you're either at the maximum value or the minimum value of the directional derivative, again, depending on the orientation. So right now we just hit the minimum value, which was the negative 4.47, and we just keep spinning around, and you should see one more time, we should run over the maximum value again whenever the blue plane aligns with the green plane. So again, the gradient just picks out what is the maximum rate of increase if, uh, or the maximum rate of decrease. And again, the values of those are going to be just the length or the magnitude of the gradient or minus the length or the magnitude of the gradient.